This video is brought to you by TrueLearn. What is going on everybody? It's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today we'll talk about many questions and answers in microbiology. So grab a piece of paper and let's see how many cases you'll answer correctly. These cases are from TrueLearn.com. Use the link in the description box to get a special discount. Let's get started. TrueLearn is a question bank that has thousands of cases with answers, explanations, Many of them have summary tables, and many of them have picmonics embedded within the explanation under the question. And again, if you use my link in the description box, you get a discount. Currently, you're going to save $25 or 15% off your subscription price. Click on the link now. And without further ado, here's the first case. We have a 29-year-old man in Wisconsin. Tell your folks I said hi. Presents to the physician due to several months of fever, night sweats, and productive cough. He has lost 6.8 kilograms or 15 pounds during this time despite no changes in his diet and not being able to exercise. He recently noticed multiple skin lesions while taking a shower. He has no medical history and does not take any medication. He smoked half pack cigarettes a day between the ages of 18 and 20 but quit smoking at the age of 21. He does not drink alcohol or use illicit drugs. He works in construction and says that he's outside 7 to 10 hours each day. His temperature is 38.7 Celsius or 101.7 Fahrenheit. Pulse is 78 per minute. Respirations are 15 per minute. Blood pressure is 115 over 70. Dermatological examination reveals multiple well-circumscribed verrucous skin lesions. A chest x-ray shows consolidation in the right upper lobe and lytic lesion on the anterior portion of the left-sided rib. Which of the following is the most likely cause of his symptoms? Is it A. Asbestosis, B. Blastomycosis, C. Histoplasmosis, D. Small cell lung cancer, or E. Tuberculosis? Please pause the video and try to answer this yourself. We have fever, night sweats, and productive cough. In Wisconsin, multiple well-circumscribed verruca skin lesions and lytic lesions. This is what? This is blastomycosis. Blastomycosis is endemic in the United States and Canada, especially in the Ohio and the Mississippi River Valley, the Great Lakes, and the East Coast. To remember blastomycosis, think of a blast in Chicago, and Wisconsin is close to Chicago. Blastomycosis is also characterized by the famous broad-based budding yeast. Blastomycosis can lead to lung disease. It can disseminate also to bones, leading to lytic lesions in the bones, and it can disseminate to skin, leading to verrucous skin lesions. Now, please get a piece of paper and let's doodle together. Let's draw a United States map like this. Okay. And here is Florida and Texas and California and we're done. Okay, where do you find blastomycosis? You draw the bee like this on the east coast. This is where you find blastomycosis. And of course, it extends to the Great Lakes and to the Midwest. How about histoplasmosis? Histoplasmosis with an H is in Ohio with an H. Next, coccidioidemycosis. You find coccidioidemycosis in California and Arizona, especially after earthquakes. Coccidioidemycosis is also known as valley fever. Why after earthquakes? Because earthquakes will make a crack in the surface of the earth and then the fungal spores will emerge. They will emerge out of this crack in the surface of the earth. People will inhale the spores and get sick with coccidioidemycosis. But how about paracoccidioidemycosis? That will be in Latin America. So again, blastomycosis, east coast, histoplasmosis, Ohio, coccidioidemycosis, southwest, so California and Arizona, paracoccidioidemycosis, Latin America. Please note that there is a big overlap between histo and blasto. So there are certain areas in the United States that have both blasto and histo. And this was the answer to the first question. Next is case number two. Please pause the video and try to answer this yourself. Let's go. A 60-year-old man comes to the physician because of recurrent nodules on his skin that are intermittently pruritic. This is going to be important. He initially noticed the nodules 10 years ago, but has not visited a physician during this time. He worked for many years along the river banks of Ethiopia as a farmer. His temperature is 36.8 Celsius, 98.2 Fahrenheit. 
Pulse is 75, that's okay. Respiration 12, that's okay. Blood pressure is 120 over 75, okay. Physical examination shows diffuse, leathery skin nodules with areas of depigmentation. Add to that the itching, and this is a classic description of lichen simplex chronicus. Heart sounds are of regular rate and rhythm without murmur. Abdomen is non-tender and non-distended. Which of the following is the most serious complication of this patient's most likely disease? Is it A, blindness, B, cancer, C, heart failure, D, megacolon, or E, small bowel obstruction? And the answer here is cancer. Like in simplex chronicus can lead to cancer. I'm not saying that this is common, but this is a possible complication of lichen simplex chronicus. Here's a question for you. Can you name a parasitic infection that can lead to megacolon? If you know the answer to this question, please comment below. Next, case number three. Please take a moment to pause the video and answer this yourself. Let's go. 46-year-old homeless white male presents to an inner city free clinic with a large crusting mass on his left mandible. He is currently living in an abandoned apartment building with no heat or running water. He denies using street drugs or alcohol, but says he smokes cigarettes when he can get them. The mass feels lumpy and hardened with a wooden consistency on palpation. A sample is taken from a yellow-colored healing ulcer. Which of the following most closely describe the organism cultured from the lesion? Is it A, branching gram-positive aerobic rod, B, forms communicating sinus tracts that releases sulfur granules, C, highly resistant to penicillin, D, produces oxygen dismutase, or E, susceptible to aminoglycoside antibiotics? Well, what do you think this is? So, we have a homeless person, probably with poor oral hygiene, a smoker, a mass on the left mandible that is lumpy, hardened, with wooden consistency and yellow colored healing ulcer. This is actinomyces infection and actinomyces are bacteria that can make communicating sinus tracts. What does that mean? This is the jaw. A sinus tract will exist between the outside and the inside and stuff is gonna come out looking as if they are sulfur granules. They do not contain actual sulfur, but they look like sulfur. I've talked about actinomyces in a separate video in my microbiology playlist. Remember, these are gram-positive bacteria. They are not fungi, despite what the name might suggest. They are not acid fast. They are facultative anaerobes. They have branching filaments that look similar to the hyphae of a fungus, even though they are not a fungus. They are bacteria. Actinomyces are part of the normal flora of your upper respiratory tract, mouth, gastrointestinal, and genitourinary systems. Actinomyces are low virulence bacteria, but they are only capable of causing disease if the normal mucosal barriers are compromised, such as trauma, such as tooth extraction poor oral hygiene, abscesses, etc. We will have a chronic granulomatous infection that is suppurates. What does that mean? It makes pus. Surrounded by fibrosing granulation tissue. The suppuration creates an abscess with multiple sinus tracts that appear as colonies of filamentous microbes bound together via calcium phosphate. They appear as if they are sulfur, but they do not contain actual sulfur. What they do contain is calcium phosphate. Whenever you have a patient with tissue swelling and fibrosis and multiple sinus tracts along the angle of the mandible, think actinomycosis, please. Actinomycosis can grow in culture, but it's a very slow process. It takes about two weeks on average. So you need to notify the lab to extend the incubation. You gotta cook it low and slow. Everything about actinomyces is slow. The course of the disease, slow. The recovery after the disease, also slow. The route of entry of the bacteria after traumatic introduction, dental caries, and dental extraction. Possible complications, dental infections, dental abscesses, oral abscesses, lung abscesses, empyema, brain abscess, encephalitis, granulomatous infection, actinomyces can lead to yellow vaginal discharge, 
from an infected intrauterine device. This can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease or PID, including vaginitis, cervicitis, uteritis, and salpingitis. Salpingitis means inflammation of the fallopian tubes. How can we manage actinomyces, surgical debridement of the lesion? And then we're going to give penicillin because these bacteria are sensitive to penicillin. What if the patient is allergic to penicillin? Try clindamycin. And back to the question. So we agreed that this is actinomyces infection. Actinomyces, are they gram-positive aerobic rods? No, they are not aerobic. They are facultative anaerobes. Highly resistant to penicillin. Not true, because these bacteria are sensitive to penicillin. Produce oxygen dismutase? Not true. Susceptible to aminoglycoside antibiotics? No, they are susceptible to penicillin antibiotics. Case number four. Please pause and try to answer this yourself. What do we have here? 38-year-old Taiwanese businessman brought to the emergency room with fatigue, malaise, fever, and right upper quadrant pain. He reports seeing dark colored urine for the past few days and complains of diffuse pruritus, which means itching. On physical exam, the patient is jaundiced with right upper quadrant tenderness. Lab results are remarkable for elevated transaminases, which is AST and ALT. So these liver enzymes are high, which means the liver is on fire. Bilirubin is also high and alkaline phosphatase is high. And this is the most important part. Anti-hepatitis A virus, IgM, is positive. Which of the following is the most likely cause of his complaints? So, IgM against hepatitis A, which means what? It means this is acute, not chronic, hepatitis A infection. Why do you say acute? Because we have IgM and not IgG. Why hepatitis A? Because the antibodies are targeting hepatitis A virus. Why do we call it hepatitis? Because it is a liver inflammation. Hepato means liver, itis means inflammation. And when the liver is inflamed, what's going to happen to ALT and AST? They will be increased. These are known as the liver transaminases or aminotransferases. This is the alanine transaminase and this is the aspartate transaminase. Next, when I have hepatitis, what's going to happen to my bilirubin? The bilirubin will be elevated. What type of jaundice this is? Is this prehepatic jaundice, hepatic jaundice, or post-hepatic jaundice? The answer is, this is hepatic jaundice because the problem is in the liver. This is also known as hepatocellular jaundice. To learn more about jaundice and bilirubin, I have a special video on this topic titled Bilirubin and Jaundice, and you can find it in my gastroenterology playlist. Next, the alkaline phosphatase is elevated. What does that mean? It means that some bile ducts are involved. And remember that we have intrahepatic bile ducts and extrahepatic bile ducts. In this case, it's probably because of the involvement of the intrahepatic bile ducts. Now, what type of bilirubin will be elevated if we have hepatocellular jaundice? Is it the unconjugated bilirubin or the conjugated bilirubin? The answer is both. Both of them will be elevated, the indirect bilirubin as well as the direct bilirubin because this is hepatocellular jaundice. And any time the conjugated bilirubin is high, two things can happen. Number one, itching. And that's why they said the patient has diffuse pruritus. Number two, bradycardia. Why does this happen? This is the effect of the elevation of the conjugated bilirubin. Many doctors know that the increased conjugated bilirubin causes itching. Almost nobody knows that it causes bradycardia. The question is, which of the following is the most likely cause of his complaints? Is it A. Consuming reheated rice B. Intravenous drug use C. Maternal fetal transmission D. Multiple sexual partners or E. Raw shellfish consumption Let's try consuming reheated rice. No, this is Bacillus cereus infection and not hepatitis A. Intravenous drug use, this can lead to many problems, including right-sided infective endocarditis in the heart and maybe hepatitis B or hepatitis C, but not hepatitis A because hepatitis A is fecal-oral and not parenteral. So B is incorrect. How about C? Maternal fetal transmission. Again, hepatitis A is fecal-oral and not contracted via vertical transmission from the mother to the fetus. 
multiple sexual partners. This can lead to hepatitis B or hepatitis C, but not hepatitis A because hepatitis A is fecal-oral. How about raw shellfish consumption? This is indeed fecal-oral, so the correct answer is choice E. And question 5 is here. Please pause and try to answer this yourself. A 4-year-old girl is brought to the office by her father due to very shallow labored respiration since last night. She has had episodes of wheezing in the past with illness and occasionally uses a nebulizer with colds. The past two days she has had a sore throat and was unable to eat. But her father believes these respiratory symptoms are different than usual. On exam, she is a well-nourished female with obvious distress. Vital signs include a fever of 39 degrees Celsius, 102 Fahrenheit, and respirations of 28 breaths per minute. She has no wheezing, but does have bilateral strider on auscultation. Her oropharynx is erythematous and edematous, and she drools profusely. The rest of the exam is non-contributory. A thumb sign is seen on x-ray. Which of the following tests could help confirm this diagnosis. Is it A, alpha hemolytic bacterial growth on blood agar, B, growth on McConkie agar, C, negative direct Coombs test, D, positive anti-cardiolipin antibodies, or E, positive Quillung reaction? What do you think? Let me know your answer in the comments. What I like about TrueLearn is that they provide many tables in the explanation. For example, here is a table for Marfan syndrome, where you'll learn about the genetic defect in Marfan, the clinical features of Marfan, as well as the complications of this disease. The facts written in bold letters are the most high yield. And in the explanations, you can find many picmonics. You click on them and a video will play. This is Marfan syndrome. Notice the pectus excavatum. Notice the arachnodactyly. The mitral valve prolapse the aortic regurgitation, the eye lens subluxation, the submarine, the fact that the disease is autosomal dominant, the dominoes, and the defect is in the FMR1 gene, the frog. Whether you're studying to become an MD, a DO, a PA, an anesthesiologist, a surgeon, a neurologist, OBGYN, pediatrics, psychiatry, dental hygiene, medical assisting, nursing, nurse practitioner, occupational therapy, pharmacy, pharmacy technician, physical therapy, and even speech language pathology, TrueLearn has a solution for you. Simply click on the link in the description box, which will save you $25 or 15% of your subscription price. What I like about TrueLearn is that they have thousands of questions with answers and explanations. And this is one of my favorite features ever. You can sort the questions by the degree of difficulty. You can start with easy questions and then increase the level of difficulty until you reach the most difficult questions. Moreover, you can answer questions on a specific topic such as tuberculosis. You can create a question block on one topic only such as TB, which is amazing. TrueLearn has many summary tables, detailed analytics, and the explanations integrate with picmonics, which helps you learn faster and retain longer. I will not recommend any product to you until I've tried it myself. This is my percentile rank. What do you think? You can try TrueLearn for free, and if you use my link or the discount code Medicosis, you get a special discount. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you TrueLearn for sponsoring this video. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.